Welcome to the Rise Movement Podcast, a place where legends just like you learn how to raise your standards every day. Welcome to another episode of the Rise Movement Podcast. I'm Dave and I'm joined with my good friend and client, Danny. Danny is the owner of this amazing business here, Hair Color Cafe. She's been a hairdresser for the better part of what, 20 years now? Yeah, 20 years this year, yeah. <laughs> it's yep. pretty wild. Full on. We are going to dive into some amazing things. Danny is one of the coolest and most creative, different people that I've ever met. So you guys are in for an absolute treat today. I'd like to welcome to the podcast, Danny Scully. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so Danny's not the greatest when it comes to social media. No, and that's all good. My armpits are sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that we've got here in this awesome salon is authenticity. And that's one of the coolest things that I, I like about you is you're down to earth, you're real. There's no facade, there's no bullshit. What you, what you see yeah. is what you get. Yeah, that's yeah. and that's what we wanted in here too. Yeah. Yeah. So when did that start for you? When did like the recognition of authenticity ma start mattering to you? Oh gosh, <laughs> since I was a kid. Yeah. But, yeah, I was the kid that would rock up to school with the odd socks or the just statement piece that would be no one else is doing it, you know, and then yeah, as soon as people would catch on to the trend, I'd have to do something different. Like, it's just been forever, pretty much. Yep. My whole life. So would you say that you're a, like, contrarian or a rebel, or would you say that you just... Probably, I would absolutely resonate with the word rebel. Yeah. Like, 100%. Like, tell me not to do something that makes me want to do it more. Yeah, can yeah. relate. Yeah. Was that your entire childhood? Were you just, like, rebellious from the word go? Um... Yes. Yeah. Yep, yep. I shaved my next door neighbour's cat, burn a big hole in the carpet. Like I was very much like, oh, not allowed to touch that. Let me touch it. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Actually, huge. Like, I think even one time I burnt the big hole in the carpet. My mum even said like, you're only alive because you had chicken box. Like, because I was just on a destructive path at that age. So, yeah. Like, yeah, it was bad. I was, I've always been. So where else did you grow up? Uh, all over the place, really. Like, we moved around a lot when I was a kid. Um, Mum had a few abusive relationships that we were trying to run away from a lot. So from Newcastle to Brisbane to Eagleby to Gold Coast to Tweed. Like, we lived up and down. New South Queensland. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then most of my teenage years, like Eagleby, we mm -hmm. grew up. So housing commission, yep. which was had its moments, good and bad, I suppose. Like, um, but I think that's elsewhere the authenticity comes from as well, because realistically, I grew up seeing a lot. Like, so to me, that was reality. Like, mm. so it's like nothing, like would bother me in the sense of someone's truth you know what I mean like I saw the worst so it was like why not show up like your best and mm. like you love yourself you know like yeah that's yeah. a pretty a pretty hard thing to grow up with seeing you know low socioeconomic status people around you you know drugs yeah. alcohol and everything that goes around with housing yeah, commission the, it's the fights like everyone is so um you know desperate I suppose like not Maybe desperate's not the right word, but they're struggling. So it's like there is this, they're a bit more hungry than the person that has a full plate, you mm. know? So it is very, um, yeah, it's just a volatile. Yeah, very volatile. Yeah. yeah. So what were some of the other themes of your childhood and teenage years that you saw and noticed? Uh, like growing up, yeah. oh gosh, like, you know, teenage pregnancy was a huge thing. Um, like obviously drugs like is just rancid mm. like in those sorts of environments like it's almost like um the more you're struggling sort of thing the more you reach out to things to obviously make yourself feel better like yeah. you know so um oh like lots of different stuff like even um we had like at one point in time it was like the aboriginals against the white people sort of thing and it was very volatile like there was always fights like there was one night i remember waking up and there was like 40 blokes in our backyard because all my cousins mates were in like some big brawl so they were hiding out you know mm. um 
obviously domestics, like, through and through. We'd have, like, wars in the street, like... And at one point, there was, like, three of my, like, groups of family living in the one street. So it was, like, our street, you yeah. know? So, yeah, it was just just a whole different world, really. Mm. Like, yeah. So having such a diverse Yeah, upbringing. diverse is a good word. Because I also had good parts as well. Like, my mum's side of the family and that, like, have always given me... Um, a soft spot I suppose to land like and there were times like I ran away from home when I was 13 and I stayed with a friend for a little bit but then I ended up at my auntie's house like and I've ended up at my auntie's house a couple of times like so I had good parts as well and I'm very lucky that I had that side of the family because it's ultimately given me an out Mm. you know like an, an option like you don't have to live like that you can live like however you want you know yeah yeah. So I, I've spoken to a few people that grew up in really like hard environments and stuff like that. Lots of drugs, alcohol, violence, all these sorts of things. And the one thing that they have in common is a, a theme of hitting escape velocity to get out of that place. Yeah. You know, it's like the small town syndrome. Everyone, you know, like they kind of go to school, they work and they do all these things in this small place. People like yourself and that think bigger, dream bigger, have that opening to be able to leave. What was the thing, like, what was the catalyst that you said, fuck this, I'm leaving, I'm done with this place and I'm going to greener pastures sort of thing? Uh, I had that drive for as long as I can remember. Like, I think, like, even when I ran away from home at 13, obviously I was getting out of there, Mm. you know? Like... So my whole, like, just, I don't know, always just... I think my pop actually was the one that said, you don't choose where you come from, you choose where you go. And, like, that always left an impression on me that I didn't have to stay. Like, I didn't fit in there, so I don't have to stay there, Mm. you know? So, yeah, I'd always have wanted to get out of there. And ever since I've gotten out of there, I've never looked back. I've never been back. Like, yeah. Yeah. I won't even drive through. (laughs) Yeah, well, it's that old saying, isn't it? You know, you, the only time you ever look back is to see how far you've come. Yeah, and, yeah, to be honest, that's it. I think the last time I drove through, it was like, whoa, like, an eye-opener of I'm so grateful I'm not here anymore, you know? Like, yeah, huge. And I think just even, obviously, watching my mum and sort of seeing what she'd been through and that sort of stuff also made me go, like, I don't want to end up like this, mm. you know? Yeah. And then I remember being at a kid's party, like, a friend, and her mum was really bad on the drugs and that, but her auntie had come to the party, and she wasn't. She was beautiful. And she was this flight attendant that just was gorgeous and had her life together. And I just remember thinking, like, I want to be like that sister, not like that sister. <laughs> like, So that probably was, like, that moment that I was determined. Like, I, I even remember, I think, grade 10... I really started like committing to school a bit more and I really started trying to like show up for the things that mattered, you know. At one point I was like at TAFE, was like going to school, looking after my brothers and that and then um, going to work as well, night feel like because I was just adamant to be out of there. Like I wanted to travel, that yeah, like I don't know, I just... I was going to be the cool auntie. <laughs> like, literally, actually, when I think about it now, I really was, like, off um, that girl's auntie, like, running with the model that I'm just going to be the cool auntie that blows in, blows out, like, temporarily and get on with my good life. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So, yeah, probably then. But always, like, if shit's bad, I'm always looking for a forwards path that's going to get me out of it, not stay in it you know mm. like yeah to me you seem like a very much an up and out sort of looking person rather than a down and in yeah you know you have your introspective moments and you're like very self-aware and you know oh marinade yeah like, yeah but the, the, as long as i've known you it's always been up and out it's like all right so w- not like to escape or bypass or anything like no. that it's like I know where I fucking want to go. Yeah. I know what I'm aiming at. Like, yeah. I know where I want to be. Yeah, you're, and I know what I don't want to do or, like, that too. Yeah. Like, I don't... And I, f- I think that's the part for me is, like, when I start to feel stuck or, like, start to feel that yucky feeling, that's when I'm like, okay, do something different. Mm. Or otherwise, 
I'm just going around in circles. Yeah. Yeah. With, you guys won't be able to see all this, but maybe on this camera here, but th there's art everywhere and art's a big expression of you. It's like, there's a massive creative aspect to who you are. 100%. Is that an outlet for you to be able to see up and out of the world? That was my whole escape. Mm. That's always been my escape, like 100%. I can tap out and just go wherever I need to go. And that's probably where I process a lot of what I have to process in a way that's not like sitting in it either mm. sort of thing. It's like, yeah, I, I don't know. Always, since I was a kid, like, I even remember at one point we were in a caravan and I just remember we had the tiny little TV and I was just watching Art Attack and trying to replicate the little monster drawing, you know? And forever, like, I asked my mum and that's it. Like, I just colour in in books or, you know, anything I could get my hands on creative-wise, like, I was all over it. Mm. So, I even remember as a kid, like, I'd save up my pocket money and I'd go down to the cheap shop and I'd just buy a bunch of art stuff and, like, crafty supplies, which I still have some of that stuff now and use it, like, and it's fun going back because it's, like, I always knew it would come in handy, <laughs> like, even though it's, like, 20 years later, like, or whatever, but, yeah, so I was always the kid that would be down at the bloody cheap shop buying, like, fabric or, yeah, whatever I could find. Mm. I'd always be, like, my bedroom was, like, painted that's one thing I give about my parents they were um they were pretty cool in that respect like I got to express myself through my creativity like as much as I mean they didn't go out and buy me like all the cool art stuff or whatever like but you know if I was painting something or whatever they never gave me shit for it or they never like they always like they let me paint my bedroom they let me paint my furniture like they let me do those things yeah. like yeah, so I'm really grateful for that. But yeah, like, yeah, I don't know. Always. What is it that art gives you that nothing else can, to, can tap on the same thing? Um, connection to a deep, deep part of myself that I don't think I can connect with consciously. Mm. So it gives me a window into my subconscious, I suppose. And that's even where especially with the mandalas and stuff at the moment for me i'm like that's where i can really get lost like and just i don't know i don't i don't know how to explain it it's like you just go somewhere else yeah yeah it's interesting that you bring the subconscious and mandalas together because carl jung talked heavily about how mandalas the, sym the symmetry of it um Pattern, the, the pattern and everything like that absolutely it's a symbol of the soul absolutely like and it is when you really like yeah it is 100 percent. like that's what you feel too i suppose and it doesn't it's not like it's not like anything like sort of thing it's mm. like it's a i don't know how to explain it it's just space yeah, yeah. and that's space. what it is it creates space like in your mind for maybe other information to come through, you mm. know, like, yeah. 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 We're also wound up with these anxiety rectangles that just keep us plugged in, you know, down and in sort of thing. Yeah. Whereas it, we don't get the space to be able to create up and out. We don't get the space to be able to go, okay, what is available to me? Yeah, what, 100%. what aren't I seeing, you know, 100%. to be able to take a step back, have a moment to regulate and to go, whew. Okay, like, yeah. what do I actually want? Yes. Who do I want to become? How do I actually feel? Yeah. Like, because sometimes I think that's the regulation part too. You, emotion will hit and it's confusing because it's all just a feel, like energy in your body sort of thing. So sitting with it, that's what art is for me, I suppose, is that's when I can get to the bottom of what is that energy too, like, you know. And sometimes I can feel the difference too when I'm really in the flow and all my lines are all smooth and like everything. And then there'll be times where it's just like, oh, like fuck, every attempt I make, like I'm too, I don't know, like in my body as opposed to like letting it flow. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's, and then that's when I'll sit with myself a little bit and do the whole, even meditate a little bit because it's like, all right. Like, I'm struggling. Like, and there's something that obviously I'm disconnected with too because it's not just coming through freely, mm. you know? So that's when I feel like I have to bring more conscious attention to it, sort of. 
whereas the rest it just sort of comes in and out freely. Yeah. Free flow. You get into you know? that flow state. Yeah. That's and that's where I really like to be in that flow state. That's when you're like, oh, like you're somewhere else. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's a really interesting observation. So when you notice that you're too much in your head or in your body sort of thing and you're not allowing the freedom and the flow to come through, you'll actually center yourself harder into your being so that you can allow the flow to come through. Even yeah, more. and then I have to do some deep breaths because obviously I'm holding my breath a bit as well. And then I have to consciously sometimes remind myself to breathe while I'm trying to do a paint stroke because that's ultimately the flow, mm. you know? Like, whereas if I hold, am holding my breath in that, that's when I'm like more like in my body sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's learning too to, like I'm only just at that point, I'm learning the difference now. Mm. Like I used to put a lot of shit on myself because it just, oh, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. But it's like, I can do it. I just have to be in a space to do it sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, but then there's also times too, that's like at the moment while I'm doing the mandalas and that, but then there's other things that I'll do that are very just loose and expressive and just make a mess because that's what's needed at the time too, mm. you know? It's more of a perch like, than it is like a tap out sort of thing. I don't know, yeah. yeah. You're like right in it actually. You know what you need to get rid of like or you... Yeah, I don't know. For me even too, like, even if I do something a bit dark, it's always got this element of light to it because it's like, that's what art is for me, really, is like turning shitty feelings into good ones, mm. you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Balancing things out. Yeah, yeah. That's why I always try and encourage the clients and that too, to like color in, like it's actually so good for you. And it's funny because Sometimes the more deeper that they get into colouring in, like they don't actually realise how much more they're opening up, you know? Yeah. Like, so it is, I've seen it in other people, not just myself, mm. like it's such a cool tool. Yeah. Yeah. So when did hairdressing and when did that creative side of you come into it? Uh, high school. High school? Yeah. Was it something that you got told by a mentor or guidance counsellor or something like that that you should look into it? No, I went to my guidance counsellor and I wanted to go to art school, naturally. And I was told that that job was only for the rich people, pretty much. <laughs> um, you have to have a lot of money to go to uni and because it was just a uni thing then too. There wasn't yeah. like TAFE, there wasn't these subdivision things that you could go do as a starter, you know? like So... That was very disheartening. And then I asked about interior design and it was the same answer. So I was like, oh, what am I gonna do? And then I was in the office one day because I was in trouble and my year coordinator come up and said, oh, would you like to do hairdressing? And I was like, no, because I was such a tomboy too. Like, I don't wanna do that. And then she said I'd get two days out of school. So I was like, I'll do it, no worries. And then. I don't know, I got there and I realised I didn't actually even think of hairdressing as a creative job, like, at all, like, until I did my TAFE course and then I realised, like, oh, this is pretty cool, so, yeah, I, like, I tried to go through to grade 12 because I thought to myself, like, hairdressing was just going to be a temporary thing and I'm going to art school, so I, this is just a job for me to make money so I can afford art school, like, um... But yeah, then I found out like my parents hadn't paid my school fees and stuff and just without the formal and all the cool stuff at the end of the road, I just thought, fuck this, I'm going to get an apprenticeship. So I left school, went and got an apprenticeship and yeah, had definitely a ride there because the industry was so different then. Like we did not have apprentice rights, like, or there was like no, my first year, what boss was an absolute bitch like I would go home crying every day my mum would be like you want me to go sort her out and I'd have to be like no I'm an adult like I can do this this is my job like yeah and then I stood up to her one day and I just got nothing but respect from her after that so yeah like and then I've met I've met some amazing people along the way I've like learnt from some incredible hairdressers um yeah, like, it's been a ride. Like, the industry itself is just such a, like, just full on. Like, there's so much to it, you know? Like, and it is super creative. Like, I love it. Mm. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've been 
in your business for the past, what, two and a half months now? And just the, the little glimmer that I've had access to while I'm doing your socials and watching you guys in here, like I'm in awe of <laughs> how you guys do what you do. <laughs> it's, it is, yeah, it is so this. complicated. <laughs> It's like, it is a little bit actually, like I will, we don't give ourselves enough credit sometimes because there is a lot that goes to it. Absolutely. There's like, science and there's maths and there's like, you got to have emotional intelligence. It's like, yep. yeah. You have to know how to communicate to actual people. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 You have to know how to present uh, a, a pleasant customer service attitude to people, yep. to be able to price present to people, yep. to talk about why their ideas are stupid and you need to do something different that's actually going to suit them. I mean, well, that's my vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, and you've got to know how to deliver it yeah. a little bit yep. softly, like, yeah, yeah so people be, don't get offended. You can't yeah. be a bull in a china shop like yeah. I am. Yeah. You're like, no, 100%. that's a dumb idea. You're going to look like, dumb. You've got to be graceful about it, 100%. Yeah. Especially when people have high expectations and you've got to let them down gently, mm. you know, like... Because at the end of the day, we're not fucking miracle workers. And that's, we do our best. And like, there are some days I'm like, that is magic. <laughs> like, where did that come from? Like, but then it's not, like, it is a skill. We learn hard for, and it's like, you have good days and you have bad days too. It's still very much a real job. Mm. Like, yeah. So. Fitting your creativity, fitting your self-awareness, knowing that you're like a, a very much an outward looking sort of person. How did you find a happy balance? How did you start creating you as you are as an adult now? I'm still working on it. Yeah, obviously, yeah, forever very evolving. Much so. Like yeah. balance is something that I'm still working on, especially now that I am here, because obviously any business owner I'm sure would agree that it doesn't stop when you go home like and it's like a 24 7 thing that you're constantly even just thinking about what needs to be done or like actually doing the things or then the plans forwards and then like yeah there's a lot it's a lot so I suppose that's where I have to make time for my creativity mm. because otherwise I'm just gonna be a burnt out mess like yeah. so in the mornings, I'll do a little bit. That's why else I'm loving the mandalas because I can actually commit to just one round and then it's like a lap mm -hmm. and I can leave it then and walk away. Like, whereas when I was doing the clay and stuff like that, it was like, I can't leave it out. It's going to get hair all through it and all the rest of it. So mm. yeah, it's, I've just tried to find a way that works, I suppose. Yep. And not put the pressure on myself where it's like, just let things evolve. Like, in time. Mm. It's like, I don't need to have that painting finished. Like, I can, like, I'm not doing it for any reason other than my own benefit. Yeah. So, yeah. So I just fit it in when I can, really. Mm. Yeah. So what's some other things that you've done study-wise or, you know, um, like books and mentorships and courses and all these sorts of things? What's some other things that have caught your interest that have made you who you are today? Um, oh, like I've done a few different things. Mm. Like, um, well, obviously, like, so many creative endeavours, like, you know, YouTube is my best friend, like, um, yeah, like, heaps of different little, like, workshops or classes, like, just, like, painting ones and stuff, like, I've done somatic sort of stuff, like, releasing and all that, um, I have worked with mentors and um, life coaches. I've done, I did interior design for a bit. So I did end up getting there eventually and decided that that was not for me. Um, I just want to be the, like, the artist that the designers, like the interior designers want to, they want my stuff. Mm. That's where I'm at. I'm like, I don't want to deal with that. That's just, you're just a glorified delegator and I don't like it. Um, what else have done? Just, it's hard. I haven't kept a tally. Oh, I did like colour therapy, art therapy, like, um, Reiki, um, done a bunch of different stuff like that. Like, I'm always going down rabbit holes. Mm. <laughs> so, I don't know, yeah. Just off people, like in life too. Yep. Observing. 
learning from other people's fuck ups as well. Like, that's a big one actually. A very much like, if I see someone do something that I don't like, I'm not gonna go do it. Mm. Like, yeah. Yeah. Hairdressing, like the people I speak to, like the conversations I've had, the realities I've had to face, like the, yeah, just the vast, vast emotions that come through clients, you know? Like that's taught me so much. Like, yeah, I don't know, mm. that's about it. So when I first got into the industry as a PT, I was taught that it's personal first, training second, that you're going to be people's best friends, they're gonna confide in you much the same way that they do with a hairdresser. I felt disastrously unequipped to deal with people because I'm such an awkward dude myself because like I am on the spectrum because I think differently, I act differently. Like, yeah. I, you know, I play by my own music. Like I literally do life by my own terms yeah. because yeah. everyone else doesn't make sense. Yeah. I know the struggles I that, that I've had to relate to people and to have tools in my toolbox to be able to help people through their things with whatever they talk to me about. How did you find that when it came to the vast array of people that come through a salon? Um, it's just a learnt thing. Mm. Like, I've learned it over yeah. the years. Like, I wasn't very good at it at first. Um, I definitely would have conversations you weren't meant to have and stuff. Like, and yeah, it's definitely been by trial and error as well. Like, I mean, just by being myself, I suppose. Like, awkwardly at times as well. Like, I don't know. It's just naturally sort of happened as well, you know, like where for me, I'm just a natural empathetic person. Mm. So like, although actually I've noticed lately, I've put a bit of a wall up. I'm not absorbing as much. It's more yeah, okay. observing, yeah. Like, so once upon a time when I was younger, that's why I had to have a break from hairdressing. Mm. So I got to a point where it was just, I was taking everything on board. Like my heart was just hurting. Like it was heavy all the time because the sadness, like, and the, just even listening like women cheating on their husbands, like when I had a horrible person at home that was treating me terribly, you know, like and just different little things like that added up over, yeah, like I've just had to learn to adapt and go with it. Mm. Like I don't always get it right still, like, but just being honest and authentic, like, like I even had a lovely um, gay lady in the other day and she was like, can I ask you a question? And I was like, yep, but I'm gonna answer honestly. Like, and she was like, awesome, <laughs> like, you know. And it was good, we had a really cool chat about like trans and that sort of stuff. And it was interesting to get insight from someone inside the community, mm. you know, like, but yeah, I don't know. Nowadays, like, it's just second nature to interact with people, but then put me in a situation like this and I'm awkward as fuck. Yeah. Like, or going to meet new people, like, I'm awkward as fuck. But, like, it's almost like there's two parts of me. Mm. You've got awkward Danny and then you've got hairdresser Danny, which is very confident and very happy to, like, hey, how are you? Mm. Like, whereas then the other side of me is very much, like, leave me alone. I'm like, don't look at me. Like, you know. I can relate a lot to that um, when it comes to meeting new people. Super awkward. Yeah. Because, just because I don't, like... Being neurodivergent, I find it really hard to show up to people that I don't know what mask I should be wearing to Yeah, them. that's that's the problem I have, like 100%. And that's why I actually have a lot of anxiety before going somewhere where there's going to be a group situation and stuff. Because How do you mentally rehearse yeah. for something that you can't yeah. know? Yeah, 1,000%. Like 1,000%. Mm. And I realise how much it's held me back from having really good experiences too. Mm because I've definitely over the years like found excuses not to go do things just because I was worried about exactly that. Yeah. And how, like, how do I have to be? Like, or how, you know, mm, how other people are gonna to be? Up. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awkward. 
That's why I'm awkward. Mm. What are the social norms and how do I have to show up and like what are they expecting of me? Yeah. Like the, the load that goes through our head when it comes to a situation that we don't know how to control, it becomes exhausting and daunting. Fuck me. And especially like you get that massive dopamine rush when it's like you say yes and it's like, yeah, cool, I'm looking forward to this thing. Oh my God, and then all yeah. of a sudden yeah. you get you get adrenal fatigue, you get burnout because you're like, yes, I'm so amped, I get so much dopamine about this thing, like, fuck yeah, I'm committing. And it turns and into anxiety it, because then, it can... then it's like you're anticipating that date then too, like, yep. yeah, and fuck And then, no. it, like, you say yes to a, you know, a plan that's coming up in the next couple of days because it's off the cuff, you're like, yeah, I want to be more spontaneous, I want to go hang out with new people, I want to meet new people, and you're like, yeah, I've got all this dopamine, but then the dopamine fatigue wears in, you're yeah, like, man. shit, I've got nothing now. And I've been the worst friend over the years because I'll just cancel. Yep, like, literally I'll, last I'll minute. No, nah, I'm done. Yeah, I got all sorry, the dopamine I needed. Nah, sorry. It's gotten to a point though where I find um, that's where I know who my real friends are too because mm. I can be like, like just really honest about it or like, so I'll pick and choose my events pretty much. Mm. Like if I know it's going to be really loud and heaps and heaps of people there like that I don't know and I'm like the only one that knows the person whose event it is or whatever, I probably won't go. Yep. Like, um, if I have spoken to the person even first and they've just reassured me that there's a few people there that I know or whatever, I might go, you know, because I just feel like then I've got my little pocket, mm. like of, yeah, I don't know. I'll cancel though. I'm very, very good at cancelling. And if anything, most people don't even invite me anymore to things because they know I just don't come. Yep. Like, yeah. Can relate. <laughs> yeah. So it gets a bit lonely sometimes. <laughs> like, yeah. But I acknowledge that, that I've done that. I've created that too. Mm. Like... And I'm trying to be better at it. Like, if I am saying I'm going to do something, I'm trying to commit to it now, like, fully. Yep. Even if I don't want to. Like, even if there is, like, so many scenarios in my head why there is a good reason to cancel, mm. I'm like, nah, I've got to show up. Yep. Like, yeah. Because it starts to feel shit. And Very yeah. isolating. Yeah, yeah. And that's the feeling where it's like when you're sitting in that isolation, you can go one way or the other. It's like you can be a victim to the isolation or you can accept that you've helped create that isolation and go do something about it. Mm. Yeah. It takes a lot of self-awareness to be able to hold yourself accountable for that when you've Huge. isolated yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes, it becomes very lonely. Yeah, it does. Like very, I think that's why else I love art because it's, that's connection when I have no connection. Mm. Like, you know. Mm. That's why I love friends. jiu-jitsu so much. <laughs> like I, I do the exact same thing. I isolate myself. I get to the point of burnout because you know you and I are both very people oriented businesses that we run. When we're peopling all the time and we over exert ourselves with uh, pr like presenting a front to people, yeah. because ultimately we're trying to put our best foot forward and you know bring out a higher energy, better state, Always, better yeah. communication. And then it leaves very little for us. Yeah. And so when you're trying to pour from a cup that's very empty, you withdraw, you become recluse, you yeah. pull inside. That's why I love meditation. That's why I love you know, going out to the bush and just like pulling in. Yeah. When I have things like jujitsu, I have a minimum standard that I train to. It's like, these are the sessions that I'm doing and I have to do people. Yeah. You can't do jujitsu by yourself. Yeah. So I often find when I'm forcing myself into these situations, it's like, all right, brave face on now. Like I've got to be courageous here. Yeah. I have to show up because I know this. Little pep talk. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know it. this is going to benefit me yeah. in the long run. I know this is. I'm going to feel great at the end of it. I have to do this. Yeah. And that's the funny thing because for nine times out of ten, when I've had huge anxiety and I've made it through it, I've normally always enjoyed myself. And it's like, oh my god, what was I so worried about? Yeah. Like, yeah. So. I think that's where you come to that awareness, where it's just like, well, if that keeps happening, then clearly you've got to have that conversation with yourself before missing out, mm. you know? Like, yeah, or otherwise, yeah, I don't know. You just, you do, you get to the other side and you're like, man, what was I so fucking worried about? Like, that was the greatest night ever, like, or, you know? Yep. Yeah. Or that person wasn't that bad, like, or, because I can get really anxious about, because um, I, have a tendency sometimes to just really just connect with the core of a person, no matter what I see. Mm. So that's like, I find it really awkward sometimes to go along with people's bullshit. You know what I mean? And like, what you see is what you get on my face sometimes. So, well, actually always, and my eyebrows do the talking. And that's where I struggle too, because I don't know how to control my face. And like, I don't want to be in a situation where like being rude or like judging like you know what I mean like it's awkward mm. so 
if there's an energy that I know I don't like being around, I don't want to go. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be around it. Like, because I don't like what it does. I don't like how I become, if that makes sense, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, well, when you're inauthentic, there's a sense of disgust that comes with it. Yeah, it's icky. It, it feels dirty. Like, icky, icky. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm I mean, noticing something. I feel some... other people's inauthenticity, that's where I'm like, ooh, yeah. like, and I don't like you because you're not being real. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Like, I can't do surface level conversations that nah. do my head in. Yeah. So one of the things that I do with every single person that I meet these days, I'm going to hold you to my standards. Like, my standards is yeah. I want to know the real person. I saw a video the other day, actually, and he was like, um, it was an autistic guy, and he's like, let's normalise these things, like, sort of thing. And obviously there was, like, certain stims, like, let's normalise that stuff and blah, blah. And then um, he was like, and let's normalise letting people sit with their own awkwardness. Mm. Because sometimes it's not actually us that are awkward. We're very content with who we are as people. Like, we are that content that's what makes us awkward yeah. like because we're in an environment then with people that that's where we feel that like we have to wear a mask then because we've got to match the masks that are in the room but it's not like we're we're okay with being who we are mm. like so i loved that statement though because it wasn't it made me realize there's times that i'm just picking up other people's awkwardness and i should just be really comfortable with who i am mm. because i am comfortable with who i am and let people have their awkwardness yeah. because Sorry, mate, that's yours. Like, yeah, mm. I loved that because that was really empowering. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. One thing that I do when it comes to any awkwardness that's experienced, instead of like, you know, one, one big thing that happens with guys is when a guy gives you a shit handshake, so you've got to shake my hand and they give you something like this and it's like, oh, that was it's gross. Weak. Let's do that again. Like I'll deliberately, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll deliberately call out the awkwardness because I know you're feeling it too. Yeah, and good. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit back yeah, and hide cool. behind the fact that we're both being inauthentic right now because yeah. we had a really shit engagement. It's like no, no, no. Let's fucking redo that. Yeah. Shake my hand oh, no. properly. How are you doing? That's what I loved. Um, we've been watching Love on the Spectrum. Yeah, and that's what I beautiful. loved about that whole show because, and that's what I mean by we're so comfortable to be who we are. There's no filter, just like, but but out your mouth. Yeah. And I love the way that they're very much like, just so honest about their nervousness. And like, they even are like, hey, can I touch your hand? Like, they're just so cute. Yeah. Like it's like, and that's all it is, is like, I don't know, direct honesty. Mm. Like One of 100%. the best policies. Yeah. Like, like, it's cliche to say, but it honestly is the best policy. Really is, though, because I suppose, too, that's when you filter the people that are there. Like, your people, that's when you really work out if it's working or not, too. Like, mm. in the sense, yeah. Yeah, real yeah. is real. Like, you, yeah. can, you can tell authenticity. You can tell realness. Yeah, fuck no. When, like, you, when you get something that's fake after being real, it's just like, it just it feels so off. Yeah. You look at it and you go, oh. Yeah. Like, I don't want that around me. Yeah. And it's like, we don't yeah. do that here. Yeah. You know, I've yeah. lost a lot of friends because it's like, no, 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 like, truth. Yeah. Truth, motherfucker. Yeah, tell me, yeah, exactly. And I have definitely lost a few friends over the years just because I've called out the shit. Mm. Like, yeah, 100%. And I realise though now, like, you know, sometimes it's not my place to, just because I see it, I don't have to say it. Like, I mean, not in the sense, okay, that's like, there's a fine line there, as in though, if you see someone abusing someone or whatever, like, yeah. intervene. I'm not saying that. But obviously, especially in my industry, yeah. I've had to learn time and place. And when I've been invited to say something or when it's like, just keep it as a thought mm. because it's not my place. Like, yeah. So that's... Also, probably some of the reason why I don't like going places and that where I know I'm going to be in positions where people aren't being honest. Yeah. And I know truths that they're not telling. Yeah. And then that's when I get really awkward. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tend to just not talk to that person <laughs> completely. Even in a group situation, I'll get really awkward and, like, it's, I can't make eye contact. Like, I get really fucking weird. Like, yeah. Yeah. See, like, I do the same thing. So, I, I this is going to make me sound autistic as fuck, but I am. Um, I observe the way that people observe me. So I'm constantly vigilant of the way that people are perceiving me. Yeah. And I yeah, notice when, I'm, a, when yeah. I'm talking, I will watch their body go in and out of rapport with me. I'll watch their body. I'll watch the little, like, little twitches, the eyebrow, you yeah. know, the, these sorts of things when I'm like, oh, you think I'm fucking weird. And I'm like, cool, you're judging me right now. Yeah. And like, 
yeah, I'm judging you for judging me sort of thing, but yeah. I know your true colours now. Like, I'm watching everything about you and I know that you're being inauthentic and you're just tolerating yeah, me right now. Yeah, and those little fa- Yeah. If anything, I would rather someone just be like, ooh, like, I will say it out loud. Yeah. And just own that thought, Yeah, you it's, know? Like, it's like yeah. that meme at the moment with the, um, the Muslim dude. He's like, ooh, what's that, brother? Oh, I haven't seen it. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, I've got to send I it to you. Yeah, I love that, yeah. Um, but it's like, it's like, oh, like, this is disgusting. This isn't you. Yeah. Like, can you please just be authentic with me? Yeah. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't like this interaction anymore because your in, inauthenticity is making me feel in, yeah, in, inauthentic and gross. Yeah, cringe. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not nice whatsoever. No, like, it's not. And that's why I, I can't do surface conversations. Like, I have to go deep with people. Yeah. You know, I want to know the real person. I want to know your traumas. I want to know your hang-ups, your insecurities, yeah. Yeah. because all of those things, that make you a human. Yeah. You know, that's, that's truth. Yeah, and that's where I love this space so much because we're normalising that shit yeah. in here. Yeah. And we have some mad combos, like which, you know, might be inappropriate for some people, but at the end of the day, it's part of life. Yep. And that's part of it. Mm. Deal with it. Yeah, you've held this this place to a really high standard. So you've just celebrated your first birthday in this yeah. place, yeah? Yeah, yeah congratulations. Yeah, this month. Yeah, it's exciting. How exciting. It's very exciting. So the, the biggest thing like in this place that I've noticed is it's it's a place to to be who you are. Yeah. One thousand percent. You know, you come yeah. in whatever, whatever you affiliate with, however you think, however you feel, whatever, whatever mood, you identify. Whatever, you, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. like you're no matter human. who, you're just a human. Like yeah. at the end of the day, and that's all. Like that's the part where we just want everyone to feel welcome mm. and seen and heard. Like it doesn't matter what your choice is in life. Like it's just a choice. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we all have to make choices. And like why make someone feel bad about a choice that probably was already hard enough to make mm. so i just treat people with face value if you're fucking rude to me i will give it back like one thousand percent don't yeah. expect to come into this salon and treat us like shit and be responded with beautiful service because you won't get it mm. but you come in and you treat us with respect and you just appreciate what we're here for and the rest of it you will be showered with the utmost love. Yep. Like, and there is nothing that you can say that is taboo. Like, it is all open in here. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. The golden rule, treat others, uh, what is it, do unto others as you have unto yourself. Yeah, amen. Mm. Like, whatever floats your boat if you're not sinking other people's shit. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, because like that. it's very, very, there is enough water for us all to float. Like, yeah. 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 And that's the part where... You know, I have my opinions, I have my thoughts, I'm a human too, I see things, I like can analyse and, you know, whatever. But I think that's also where it comes back to that whole, is it my place to say mm. it, you know? Like, and at the end of the day, like, I just, everyone deserves to feel welcome. That is both sides of the fence. Yeah. That means it's not just... Um, yeah, you can speak about whatever you want in here as long as I agree with it. Like, you know what I mean? It's no, it's a proper freedom of speech. Like, we can have disagreements in here too yeah. and normalise that it's okay to not agree. Mm. It doesn't have to turn into a war. It doesn't have to turn into anything. It doesn't have to be an awkward, uncomfortable... might be uncomfortable for a few minutes. There might even be a little silent moment. But mm. generally, it's like, up and out, move on. Yeah. Like, and... That's the other part too, where I find the more clients are experiencing that, the more willing that they're coming in and they're opening up even more, yeah. like on their next visit, because they feel that sense of comfort and mm. they know that they're not judged and they know that it's just a safe space. Like, yep. yeah, if anything, over the years, I think because I have been in situations where people are so fake or whatever and... I'm the awkward one that says what I think or like it's made me realise how punishing it can be sometimes just to speak up and be mm. honest. Like it's hard to be honest sometimes. So we shouldn't punish each other for it. Like yeah. should appreciate someone for their truth, even yeah. if you don't like it, you know? hundred percent. Yeah. It's one of the things that I love so much about the US's first amendment with free speech. Yeah. It's like, uh, like I, we don't have that in our constitution over here. You know, it's, yeah. it's sad, but we don't have that. 
I am a free speech absolutist. Yeah. I will defend your right to be able to say whatever the hell you think and whatever the hell you want to do yeah. because that's your right. That's like your God-given right. The only thing I will say though is truth without tact is cruelty. Yeah. And that's the part where I can not be nasty, even with my troops. Mm. Even if my troops disagree, I will deliver it with tact. And that's the thing, it's to be able to have that uncomfortable conversation, to be able to hold space for it. Like, I hate the term safe space, but what this place is, is a safe space. Absolutely. Like, and, but it's not that whole, like, like left wing, let's, like, bubble wrap everything, let's Fuck sanitize no. everything. Like, no. no, like, let's have open and honest communication. Yeah, let's is, call a spade a spade. Yeah. And maybe your idea is fucking stupid. Yeah. You know, maybe your idea is so backwards and so regressive, but you think you're being progressive yeah. about it. Maybe we need to have a discussion about that yeah. because you've been put in an echo chamber. Yeah. Maybe I've been put in an echo chamber. Maybe yeah. my ideas are stupid as fuck. Maybe but just discourse that, allows that. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes even, like, I know myself even with you over the years, like, being able to just have that out purge sometimes you got to say it out loud so you can hear it yourself so you're like oh that that's not right yeah hang on i take that like you know and you it's important to have those conversations communication and get the dialogue out of here just out you know because yeah. otherwise it's just fucking never ending then mm. like constant battle inside your brain yeah why we need to we need to start having more in person like harder conversations the more well like the the more experiences that we get, the more that we can have a well-rounded worldview. Yeah, you know, like to be able to have a different perspective on something, like. And we have to be able to disagree to do that. 100%. That's the whole 100%. thing, yeah. And that's the part where I struggle sometimes with people that are very much like black and white. Mm. Um, that's where I'm such a colourful person because I just can't do the black or white. Yeah, there's nuance to everything. The spectrum is so vast, yeah. like from one to the other, like. And that's the thing, yeah, like. Yeah. So I look at that as every person has their own little shade mm. of hue, you know? Like, so it's like, yeah. Like, even if you're the same color as someone, you're not the same shade, like, sort of thing. So mm. it's, yeah, I don't know. I love that you had the guts to be able to, uh, with that gay lady that you were talking with, about say, like, I'm going to say it as it is. Yeah, like, I'm going to be know. truthful. Absolutely. I think that's, I think that's a really, uh, I think that's a, a show of your character to say like, no, 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 we're going to talk about this and I'm open to talk about it. But you can like, ask me anything you want, yeah. but don't get upset with me if you don't like what I answer. Yeah. Like, cause you've asked me a question and I can't lie. So mm. you're going to get the honest truth out of me. And I don't want to pussyfoot around like a question, like a direct question, you get a direct answer, yeah. like 1000%. And there shouldn't be any shame in that. Like I actually even said to her, like, thank you for asking me. Like, and mm. thanks for opening the convo. Like, because it is nice to hear what someone else thinks of it and stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah. for sure. It, I, uh, a couple of years ago, I caught up with some old school friends. Um, it, we did like a 15 year reunion sort of thing. Oh, nice. And it was just after Rona and all that bullshit that happened. We we're out at a bar, we we're having some drinks. And one of the guys came up to me and he goes, Dave, I've had you pegged in the, like I've had you put in this place for so long and I just want to say that I'm really sorry for thinking of you this way. Yeah. I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, I thought you were this just absolute asshole, homophobic dude that like just absolutely hated gay people and all these sorts of things. And I said, oh, okay, let's clear the air. I used to be homophobic. I used to present all these things and you know call people gay and all these sorts of things because I was so insecure because my first experience with kissing someone was with a boy. Yeah. And he goes, oh, shit. Yeah. I said, so I'm comfortable in my skin now yeah. to be able to bring this to the table Absolutely. and say, I'm really sorry for the way that I made you feel because you might have been dating girls when we were in high school, but clearly you've been, you've been gay this whole time. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, I was lying to myself. Yeah. And so we had this beautiful connection, gave each other a big hug at oh, the end. And nice. like, I was like, hey, like, thank you for bringing this to me, but like, I'm really sorry for the way that I made you feel. Yeah, and no. he goes, yeah, thank you for you know, your apology. I no, accept I it. Yeah. And also it was like, it's a beautiful reciprocal thing from a place of really like, from a place of... Um, Adolescence too, yeah? yeah? You're young and dumb. Yeah, yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, we were able to have that conversation. Yeah. It was like, hey, I was beautiful. wrong. 
like, can we clear the air? And then I got to be able to say, hey, I was wrong. Can we clear the air? Yeah. And now came back together and yeah. it's a beautiful relationship sort of thing. Yeah, I you love know? that. That's like to be able to have those conversations and to show up authentic authentically and to talk about some really, really hard things. Uncomfortable things, yeah. yeah it's definitely. like, I don't understand your position. And because the most part, this is the thing. There's a lot of people out there right now thinking about these topics and all the rest of it and too scared to fucking say anything. Yeah, yeah. And like, when do we start being able to speak about the stuff that ultimately needs to change like hello there mm. has to be a conversation had first yeah so yeah that's why uh, like conversations like what you and i are having now especially with you know being recorded on social media and stuff like that they're you're walking a tightrope you yeah. know something can I be i feel like that's the anxiety i felt about this yeah was because like i you i'll answer your own like i'll answer honestly so mm. I could shoot myself in the face right now with something I say wrong. Like, However, you're showing up authentically. Like, how, how can you get angry at someone for showing up authentically and trying to work through People do, though. Mind? People are right now. People, like, there is a huge thing out there that is, like, there is a lack of authenticity. Like, people are feeling like they have to show up a certain way to be accepted or to be loved or to mm. be, like... There's so much of it happening, like... So it's, yeah, someone has to. Yeah, may as well be us. Yeah, fucking nice. Like, and anyone that wants to come to the salon, because yeah. just saying, like, I've found that's what the clientele is here. Like, they're the ones that, like, I say oddballs in a really lovely way. Mm. Like, you know, we're the oddballs. Like, we're just, we're the ones that do speak up too, like, at times. People do get angry about it though, man. Like, it's a real thing. There's fucking political correctness everywhere. Yeah, yeah fuck that. Fuck and that's, political that's correctness. That's the other part where I'm sick of walking on eggshells, mm. like, in this lifetime. It's like, yeah. if we can't talk about it, then it's a problem. Yeah, 100% agree. Yeah. I get some really cool interactions from the content that I put up because, like, I value three things higher than anything else authenticity, transparency, and vulnerability. Yeah. The more that I expose the real person inside of me, the more people can say, oh, fuck, he's a real person. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, he's, yeah. a, he's a human being. Yeah. And some of the things that I put out there on socials, it's like my domestic violence, you know, like my insecurities, my anxiety, like all these different things of what yeah. I've worked through to be able to become the man that I am now. Which are hard things to talk about. So hard. Yeah. But like, and put out there yeah. for everyone to have an opinion. Like that's where it's, yeah. yeah. And I have some of the interactions I've had with people from Growing the Rise movement, they come up to me and they go, I watched that video that you put up about domestic violence and your experience. I've had similar or my brother or whatever, and yeah. I've been able to find like common ground with these people. Yeah. And a lot of the time it's people that you wouldn't even think of. It's like, I guarantee you the work that you're doing in here and the level of authenticity and the level of conversation that you have with everyone around, there's people in here that see what you do as such important work and as such a powerful Definitely. space for integration of society. Definitely though, like more so, yeah, we've had clients make comments, like, well and truly, mm. like, yeah, yeah, we do. I know we make a difference in here, like, for sure. It's such a special place. You can't get that close and personal with people and not make a difference, yeah, like, right. in their lives, 100%. Mm. Like, yeah. Especially, it's immersive. Like, what's the average time that someone's in here for with you? Um, well, it really is dependent on service, yeah. but for the most part, we do mostly colouring. So mm -hmm. people will be here from anywhere to like two hours to like five if it's a huge transformation. Yep. Yeah, it's a pretty immersive, immersive, uh, immersive experience. Yeah, and I am noticing that um, the new clientele that's being drawn in are very um, open people. Like, and they'll sit down and they'll tell you about their childhood trauma on day one. Like, and I appreciate that because we've all got some sort of trauma. Yeah. And I find my job easier when I know what I'm working with, yeah. and I can navigate around certain things. So I found out that this lady didn't have the greatest birth mother and stuff like that. And, you know, I've got a moisturizer that smells like the perfume that the lady used to wear. So wow. we're not gonna put that on her, are we? Yeah, like, wow. yeah, so I find it easier to look after people to full degree, the more honest that they are with me too. And that's not just down to, oh yeah, I used a box dye. You know what I mean? Like, if I know your traumas or I know your triggers or I know, like if you've got OCD and you want me to clean everything in front of you, I'll do it. Like. If it makes you more comfortable, I'm not gonna fucking judge your quirks. I've got so many of them myself. Yeah. I can't. Like, all I can do is 
that's your quirk. Okay, I'll do that for you. Like, mm. it's, yeah. So the more honest someone is with me and the more open that they are too from the get-go, the more I can tune in and do what I need to do. Like, whether sometimes that's just a really good fucking chat or a blow dry or a good colour, like, it's, you know, varies then. Mm. But the more honest you are, I can gauge yeah. what I need to do, you know? Yeah. But... I don't know. Like, I love, I love just the honesty. Mm. So that to me is like everything that we want to create too. Like in the sense that come in, have a chat, get it off your chest. You don't have to live there. Like, you know, and you'll be walking out feeling like a different person too, like with your hair done. So it's a good time to, it's like at the gym and I'm on the rower and I'm like letting it out a bit. It's like, it's because it's diversional therapy. Mm. You not even realizing that you're, Therapying, like you know, it's yeah. I don't even know if that's a word, but I'm with you. Yeah. 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 So, like, I know I do this deliberately with all of my sessions. So, I a couple of years ago I used to have like coaching, hypnosis, mindset sort of stuff, and yeah. linguistics separate from PT. Separate. Yeah. The, over the last two and a half years, I've integrated. I'm like, fuck this. This is yeah. inauthentic for Which me to keep it separate. The game, yeah. Hey, so and yeah. so it's like when we're doing a training session or whatever we're doing, it's. I'm w- with you side by side and we're moving towards a destination yeah. and I'm going to be able to say things or do things or get you to you know, have a bit of introspection while you're in a rest period or while you're suffering or whatever it is that makes you go, huh, yeah. that's interesting. You, know, yeah. you have a bit of an epiphany and then it's like, all right, cool. And then I don't know if you noticed this, but or like, a I'll, yeah, or a yeah, purge. Or a purge. Yeah. But then if I notice, like, cause I'm constantly aware of purpose, people's bodies, their unconscious movements yeah. and things like that. The moment that I notice a shift, I'll like <laughs> pattern interrupt. Let's go. Let's change things. Yeah. It's yeah. like, we stop this thing. I'm going to break that pattern. We're doing this now. Cool. Yeah. Jump over here. Jump on 10 reps. Which does help. Yeah. Like heaps. Yeah. That's, and that's, I suppose. Yeah. Like in a different way, that's sort of what we're doing here. Yeah, because yeah. like you're, you're side by side. You're yeah. in people's faces. You're yeah. in people's personal space. Yeah, 100%. You know, that's a really intimate thing. It's touching the head too. That's like... That's a big thing. That is a huge energetic exchange right there. Mm. Like, And that's the part, I think, too, where we're trying to like be a bit more intentional with that as well and not just... We're not just sort of here to do your hair. Like, yeah. there is this intention in what we do. Mm. Like, and, you know... A little bit of magic as well, yeah. sort of thing, yeah. So, yeah. A little bit of magic. There's a lot of magic. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, there I've, I've seen what you've, do, uh, you've done. I've been a part of it. Like, yeah. I've felt it. It's, it's yeah, beautiful. Thanks, man. It yeah. is pretty cool. It's such a cool feeling, like, yeah, it just is. Those days where you know, you know, like, you just know. Yeah. Like, you made someone's day. And yeah, it's like, shit, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, you just know that that's going to have this ripple effect, too, for them. They're going to go home and, like... It's just going to ripple on and like that's like, oh, if we can just like brighten up little chunks, you know, here and there. Hell yeah. Yeah, it makes the world a brighter place. So how do you look after yourself? So you spend so much time giving to, pay, to people. What do you do for yourself to be able to centre yourself, to be able to do some introspection, some work? Um, so I try and meditate. Mm-hmm. I say try because um, I'm not routinely at it. Like, it's not like I do it every morning as such. Yeah, but we try. Like, the big thing I've learned with you is try means you're actually giving it a go. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Try is not like, oh, right now I'm trying to pick up that coffee cup in like a hypnosis sense. Try is you doing your best. It's you showing up and and giving it a go. 1,000 fucking percent. There's actually a song and it's like, um, oh, the lyrics are literally like... um, I can't do it. I can't. So many things I can't do. But I'll keep trying. Oh, like. Oh, I can't remember the lyrics. Oh, I don't have my phone. <laughs> um, yeah, it's along the lines of so many things I can't do. But I can try. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, girl can dream and so can a boy. And maybe dreams never die. And I love it because it's like, actually, that's when it hit me like, yeah. I can try. And, like, I do. I do a lot more when I, um, I allow myself to just try. Because mm. I don't... It implies I don't have to get it right either. Yeah. Get yeah. to be human. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. yeah. And trying is better than just doing nothing. Yeah. So, I'm happy there. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, art therapy, a bit of meditation. What, is there anything else that you like to do that... Go to the gym. Yeah. That's part of my routine now. Even though I haven't been for a week. Let's not talk about it. Um... <laughs> Um, what else? 
I do, nature is a big one for me. I just am struggling at the moment to make time for that because naturally too, the weather is a little bit like all over the shop. Mm. So normally though for me, like going to the beach and going for a walk or just even getting my toes in the sand is a big one. Like, um, or just nature in general actually, like a little bit of flowing water is always nice. Like, um, what else? I mean, I obviously do the death scroll like everyone else to yep. regulate a little bit, you know, like the wind down a little bit. So, um, what else? Mm. That's pretty much it. Hang out with like the fam. Like, oh, sometimes actually I play, I play games. Yeah. I like to play games. Yeah. So I, yeah. I'll play the PlayStation. I don't have much time for that anymore either, though. Because mm. I'm the type of person, too, where it's like, if I start a game, I want to finish the game. Yep. So, at the moment, I've even started Avatar, and I'm a little bit annoyed because, like, I haven't played it in weeks. And now I've lost the drive yep. to need to go finish things and stuff. So, yeah, that's, like, at the bottom of my list now. Mm. But There's a thing that I've noticed. Like, I've been a massive gamer my whole life. Um, the last couple of months since I've been so engaged into making content and coaching and like all the things that I'm doing, I have played maybe four hours of Xbox in the last month. Yeah. Which is like, I used to get to the point where I would play like four hours a day. Yeah. Like I would literally schedule clients around so that I could play games. Yeah, right. Whereas now it's like, I'm so engaged in purpose. What and you're doing. Yeah, yeah. it's like, I, I can't fit it in. Like I've got yeah, too many people that's, that I'm Well, helping. that's what it is for me. And like, I suppose then it's like, okay, what are all the things I love to do? And prioritize then. Yeah. What do I love to do the most? And art is always like number one yeah. for me, like a hundred percent. Because even if I'm just like I said, making a mess or trying something new, like it's still just a tap out. It's like, yeah. Mm. So that's my first go-to. Yeah. That fills my cup. Yeah. Mm. And then, yeah, music. Like I love music. That helps as well. Just process emotions and like regulate. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like I'm still obsessed with this band called Sleep Token. Yeah. They're this like hybrid metal, mm, jazz funk oh, hip-hop cool. like they've got yeah. uh, that eclectic you dive into the rabbit hole goodbye yeah like sweet. good fucking bye i'll check them out though they sound cool so they've got this um they've got this song that opened up their first album called the night does not belong to god yeah. and then their latest album um called take me back to eden finishes with a song called euclid yeah. and the the lyrics in euclid are a call back to the first song oh cool every i got goosebumps every time oh, fuck this this song, these songs, they fuck me up every time. So the lyrics to The Night Doesn't Belong to God get yeah. mirrored inside of Euclid. And then it comes to the sleep token structure, their songs usually pretty quiet at the start, it starts building, then they let off and they build yeah. and they let off and they build and then crescendo and they crash and then it comes down. Yeah, nice. And it's like, it's like a lullaby out sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, nice. Euclid with the mirror towards the, the, the Night Doesn't Belong to God, it's like um, the big piece of the chorus is the night belongs to you. And every time I hear that, I cry, no yeah, matter what. Like really? I'll be out at the back having some of um, my medicinal marijuana yeah. and like calming down for the day, regulating my nervous system, doing some introspection, maybe some meditation. The moment that I put that song on, like the floodgates open because the night belongs to me. That's yeah, my time. Yeah, that's beautiful. You know, yeah. That's my time yeah. to be able to open my heart, open my soul, yeah. sit back and just like sit with what is. Yeah. And it's like that recognition is like, no, no, this is your time. Yeah, like nice. this is special. That's cool. And I so like, like sleep, anytime I put sleep token on, now my kids are obsessed with sleep token yeah, as well. Cool. And so like the, the kids are always like sleep token, sleep token. Um, it just like, it, they fuck me up every time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get to see them in two months. I can't oh, wait. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah they're coming, cool. coming to Brisbane. Um, coming to Brisbane with uh, Bring Me The Horizon. Yeah, and cool. so like music's a massive part of my life. Huge, that's, yeah, huge. Like, I reckon music saved my life a couple of times. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. 100%. Like I've got, I've got lyrics tattooed on me. Like this yeah. one here, um, Hope For The Hopeless, A Light In The Darkness. It's lyrics to one of my favorite songs from Parkway Drive called Vice Grip. Yeah, you know, right. Like, that, that's what I do. Like yeah. I cr the first time, <laughs> 2015, Aya came out, um, I heard the, the, like Aya was the album, the song Vice Grip came on and um, 
the lyrics to the pre-breakdown is one life, one shot, um, give it all you got. And yeah. then it, like they're just this big metal chant, you know, like the crowd singing and everything like that. Um, yeah, that's one life, cool. one that's shot. A vibe. Yeah, yeah. Like, one life, one shot, give it all you got. And you know, um, hope for the hopeless, a light in the darkness. I started crying my eyes. Out. What the Aww. fuck is this? What is this? I, mean, I wasn't very self-aware back then, so I did the work and I, I wondered. I'm like, why is it every time I play this song, I get misty-eyed? I'm like, yeah, that's what I try to bring into this world. I try yeah. to bring hope to the hopeless. Yeah. You know, there's, I've worked with so many it's, downtrodden people. As cliche as it is, it's that angel song from Sarah McLaughlin for me. Where it's just, yeah, yeah, that one. I'm yeah. like, oh. Plus, I must admit, it's a funeral song in my family. Yeah. There's been a few funerals that have used that song. But it's more, it's actually what she's saying. Mm. Like, that's the part that's like in there yeah i feel it music is everything to it me. really is. like it just it makes me connect with the energy that was written into the song with yeah. the, you know the the whether it's like a love song or whether it's like a all out like uh, limp biscuit break stuff yeah you know it's yeah. one of those days where you just want to break yeah. stuff it's like fuck yeah let's go yes you know like yep. music allows you to tap into some really raw and emotion just process yeah. yeah like that's yeah i think that's a big part of what we don't do that is regulation is allowing yeah. the process of yep. emotion to happen and yeah yeah and i'd rather like scream to a good screamo song or something like that than like scream at people i suppose or yep. you know yeah yeah well it's processing things processing emotions to completion in a really safe way yeah yeah instead of inflicting your shit onto other people yeah like, you know, yeah. you might have had a, a fight with your partner and it's like, that fucking bitch, fuck you sort of thing. You go listen to, you know, whatever you listen to. Like, I love listening to The Used. So when yeah. I listen to The Used, I'm like, oh, teenage angst, let it come through me. Yeah. And take it away from me sort of thing. You yeah. know, like, I listen, to, I listen to the song Bulimic. You know, the lyrics to the chorus are, goodbye to you, goodbye to you. You're yeah. taking up my time, goodbye to you. Yeah. It was like my breakup song from, uh, from my, like, teenage years and my yeah, 20s. And so funny. I listen to that, I'm like, oh, take it away. Let, it's let all so this funny in. though, yeah, because actually sometimes with those sorts of songs, like, it's more... Like, instead of thinking about even the person or whatever I'm upset with or whatever, it's like I'm more singing it to myself, mm. as in the shitty part of myself that, like, I'm done with. Yeah. Like, that may have even contributed to it being a bad situation with someone or whatever, you know? Like, yeah. But I've always, yeah, I'm like, yeah, thinking of breaking up with myself. <laughs> <laughs> breaking up with that part of yourself? Yeah. Like, oh, get time. lost. <laughs> yeah, like, fuck off. Yep, Laders, Felicia. Yep. Yeah. That's funny though. I do that. Hmm. This has been a really cool chat. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for coming on. Nah. Thank you for sharing, being your authentic self. Thanks for having me. Awkward and all. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed I put my clip down, so I was like, I must have been getting comfortable at one point. Yep. Because I was like playing with it the whole fucking time. But all good. Done well. Done well. Survived. Expect to see more of Danny as we do sharing and more podcasts and all the rest <laughs> of the thing. Maybe. <laughs> Definitely. And also, if you're on the Gold Coast, northern New South Wales or Brisbane, check out Hair Colour Cafe for all things colour hair and getting taken care of by the beautiful Danny, you'll Come be in for an absolute treat. Stuff. Come yeah. and talk. Come and be yourself. Yeah. Come and be free. <laughs> be free. Right. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you for subscribing and leaving a review. It really helps us out. Until next time, take care. And much love.